And we're gonna start out with the exact same cells when we're looking at meiosis and mitosis. I'm actually gonna draw this out for you. And that seems a little tedious because we're gonna to have to draw all these chromosomes over and over. But I want you to remember what I've drawn here is essentially a cell, a diploid cell where the haploid number is two. I don't know if you remember that, that we can describe the haploid number with by saying N. A haploid cell is one N. A diploid cell is two N. So the haploid number is significant. Our haploid number is 23. So I'll tell you right now, even though it might feel a little overwhelming to draw four chromosomes in each one of these stages of meiosis and mitosis, we could be drawing 23 of them and you don't have to. So we'll just do two just so we can visualize all the things that are happening in these processes and where they're really similar. I threw mitosis on the right side of this diagram. And again, it should be familiar. The first thing I want to draw, and I have a feeling I'm gonna run out of room here, I wanna acknowledge, I wanna draw what is gonna to happen to that cell, what that cell is gonna look like if it goes through the S stage of interphase. Mitosis does it, and guess what? So does meiosis. And I'm making my cells sausage-like in order to fit them on this screen. So percolate, remind yourself, what do you think the, the chromosomes in my mitosis cell, what are they gonna look like um, after they go through the S phase? Well, we know in S of interphase, we've gotten the message to replicate happens in meiosis and mitosis. And the task is replicate your DNA. The cell says, got you dog DNA polymerase, let's roll. And pretty soon we have chromosomes that look like this. You know that if you see chromosomes that look like this, S has taken place. This is, remember, sister chromatids? Yes. And my sausage-like cells are not quite fitting my chromosomes. Oops, I don't like that. Oops, I like that one. I didn't like, I gotta make it big. It's gotta be big, why? <laughs> Cause the big ones are homologs. And if you look on our agenda, we're gonna spend an entire section next up talking about homologs because I would argue that everything weird that happens in meiosis that's different from mitosis takes place with the homologous chromosomes and they're all about generating genetic diversity. Okay, so let's focus. That's it. I'm not gonna do anything else. You will go ahead and it's awesome practice to draw out all the stages of mitosis. And I'm just going to tell you that the stages of mitosis are prophase, prometophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Awesome. And at the end result, we have two daughter cells that are identical to my original cell. And look, I'm not convincing you that this is true. I'm not drawing out all those stages. I'm just drawing the end result and saying, hey, it happened, look, they're identical. I'm not gonna draw out all the stages in meiosis either. And if you, again, look at our list, our to-do list, we're gonna go through the significant stages that are different. What I'm going to tell you is that mitosis, meiosis, happens twice. So we actually have, I'm just gonna do it like this. 
And I'm going to say prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase one takes place. And we end up with two cells. And I bet if I draw out what happened in these two cells, you would be able to fill in some of the details, some of the processes, some of the meiosis one events that take place. Notice that meiosis happens twice. Each one of those cells that results from meiosis one is haploid. Look at that. We have one copy of each homolog in the daughter cells at the end of meiosis one. But what else do you notice? Shouldn't be hard to observe. We have too much DNA. We have two copies of chromosome, big red chromosome, connected at the centromere. That's not how we want our cells, our daughter cells to look. That's too much DNA. We don't want two copies of the identical chromosome. We don't want sisters. Aw, sisters, sisters got a hug, but they gotta say bye-bye. So what's gonna happen? We gotta have PMAT2. Meiosis 2 takes place, and in fact, each one of these guys goes through meiosis two. And let's see here. I know I can do it. I'm going to just go ahead and draw all of these for you. What are they? Unique haploid gametes. If you look at this guy, we're going to end up with, do you agree with this? One copy of the big red one and one copy of the little red one in each of my gametes. And these gametes result in one big copy and one little copy. Okay, differences. Well, shoot, we have four resulting daughter cells. We have four unique haploid daughter cells. If you look at what happened in meiosis one, our homologs split apart and the processes of meiosis will illustrate how that takes place. Meiosis two is almost identical to mitosis because look, sisters split, not homologs, sisters split. I'm gonna show you, this is our visual. This is like the big picture of what happens. I am gonna show you like a, a normal person, whatever, somebody fancy made this diagram. We're gonna revisit this at the end. But the things that I want you to notice is here we go. Meiosis one happens and meiosis two happens. I like the way that they depicted this because they show that meiosis one is the weird one. It's the one that isn't similar to mitosis. Mitosis is really similar to meiosis two. Do you see how having a solid understanding of mitosis will help you with this whole process? All right, I'm gonna make a broad statement. It's a statement that I think I've already made. Everything unique that happens in meiosis. Everything different that happens in meiosis happens because of homologous chromosomes. So we have to spend a little chunk talking about those clowns.